Hey y'all, insight number four, this carries right on from insight number three, like it's just part of the whole same letter, and I know these chapter breaks, but again I will remind you that they never used to be, and it was just one big thing. But this particular chapter, if you are concerned about Christ's second coming, and you want to learn more about what to do, and how to be ready, this is the one for you. Um, it just very clearly says that, and to really point out to um, that the minute people start talking about second coming of Christ, they go to all the disastrous things, all the apocalyptic things. And yes, while that might be part of it, what's the bigger part? That Christ is coming, that he's bright beyond what we could ever imagine and the goodness in that. And yes, all these terrible trials will happen. There are going to be earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars and all those things. People focus on that so much and forget the part of Whenever there's that month of ugly, there's also this amount of good. So do you want to be caught up in this and thinking about the ugly, or do you want to be caught up in this and thinking about the good? You don't have to ignore this. Like, we know this is there. But we can park that over there and go, yeah, we're aware of you, but we don't want you in our lives today, thank you. And we can choose to be over here. So be not shaken. In other words, don't be worried about all the earthquake stuff. It's all good. And if you die in it, you know where you're going. Uh, if you lose loved ones to that, you know where they are. And that's the brilliant part about having faith in the gospel and knowing all of that. Because you just, it's not, it's like it's still hard, don't get me wrong. You are still going to grieve, it's still going to suck. But you know, you're not wondering completely what the heck's happening, you know. Be aware of these things. They're saying educate yourself, learn these things. So this particular chapter, you pretty much mark the whole thing. Um... In that we are children of light. I love that he puts that down for 2 through 6. He talks about how that at the Lord, we don't know when the Lord's going to come. He talks about, you know, he comes as a thief in the night. He says, um, verse 3, that it's like, you know, we don't know when a woman's going to go into labor and it's just going to happen. Um, you know, there's no one juicing them back then. Um, no C sections that we know of, although there might have been. Romans did introduce that quite early, I would say with moderate success, but um, <laughs> definitely not as sterile as it is today, right ladies? Um, but we don't actually know, and, and it, it matters not, he said it doesn't matter about that. Uh, and 4, 5 and 6, which I'm going to read because I really, really like this, he says this is about being prepared and about learning and about knowing. He says, but ye brethren, or people, um, are not in darkness that the day should not overtake, should overtake you as a thief. So when he says like the like he's going to come as like a thief in the night, he's like, but you're not in darkness. You're going to recognize this as happening. You know this and you're not going to be surprised. It's going to be, oh, I know what's happening. Um, and then in five, you are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. And then six, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So yes, while we watch for these things, what we do in the meantime is focus on this rhythm of holiness, which he's about to give starting in about chapter nine, I think. But he talks on um, in verse eight, uh, but let us who are of the day be sober. So like, you know, don't be drunken, be good in your mind, like work to have good mental health as best you can um, so that you can recognize these things, so that you're able to help others recognize these things. Um, doesn't mean that you don't have any fun though, like you don't, don't think that you have fun, but you know, be aware, don't lose your faculties, stay focused. Um, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So this is talking about the armor of God a good 10 years before he actually goes into teaching of this and another epistle, which we covered a couple of weeks ago, I think. Um, but it's still mentioned here. So this is something that's been playing on his mind and he knows about this. But what he's basically saying is, you know, God's given you this to wear, to protect you, to help you, to put it on. Like, wear it. It's a gift. Wear it. Um, it's not like the ugly knitted crunch, crunchy jersey you got from Auntie Whoever or Nana, someone that just itches. No, it's not that. This is a good thing. Wear it. Um, and a 9 and 10 is his plan 
uh, yeah, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So God hasn't put us down here for like, wrath and horribleness and to do all this. Yeah, it's part of life and, and what we go through, but it's not intended to just punish us. No, this is for a good reason that um, we can obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So whether, whatever we choose, whether we want to wake up or whether we want to stay slumbering and not be aware of it, that we get to live with him. It's, it's our choice, but that we have the choice. We have the opportunity. Um, and then I'll leave it. He's like, comfort yourselves together, edify one another. And he just goes on from there to say some amazing things about rhythms of holiness. Things that you do that just, like, they really become this heartbeat of your life, if you will. Um, esteem. Uh, others highly in love for their work's sake. So be appreciative of others. He has such a beautiful poetic way of putting things, um, which for a lot of people can be hard to understand, and I do get that. So, you know, maybe sit there with a dictionary or maybe get somebody that can put it into a, a better way. Or, as I've said before, study it from, like, the Message, for example, Bible, or uh, the New American Version, the NIV Version. That might have some, like, phrases in there that are easier for you to understand. But it is a beautiful poetic work, the the de describing of these things. Uh, in 14, he talks about um, war warn them that are unruly. So those that just warn them, don't growl them, but, you know, let them know what's going to happen. It's their choices still, but, you know, comfort the feeble-minded. So there's some of us that do need a bit of extra help. Um, and feeble-minded isn't a bad thing. You know, maybe we've had a brain injury or... Maybe we we're born into an imperfect body that needs that protection and that help. That's that's okay. So do that. Uh, support the weak. Oh, sometimes I'm weak. I'm often weak and I need support. Uh, be patient toward all mankind. Oh, I'm all mankind. Be patient. You don't know what people are going through. And even if they're not going through anything, it's just let it be. They, got, they get their own. It's all good. Um, see that none render evil. And follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now then the next one, 19, I love, quench not the spirit. Don't put that fire out. The Holy Ghost is often described as a fire burning in here. It's, it's a spiritual feeling, and he's saying quench not the spirit. Don't put that out. And in the footnotes it says extinguish, hinder, or suppress. Don't do that. Embrace it. You don't want to suppress it. You want it more. Um, so yeah, quench not the spirit. And then in 20, despise not prophesying. So when things come out that we're not quite sure about or we don't completely agree with, don't despise them. Question them, yes. Get your own revelation and an answer to it, yes. But don't despise them. It's not healthy for you anyway. Um... Uh, you know, prove all things. Again, ask questions. Do that. Um, it says in the footnote for that one, uh, examine, put to the test. It's That's exactly what we're told to do in the scriptures. Moroni tells us that. Feast upon the words and then, like, literally try it out, you know. When you read these things, I would exhort you, go pray about it. See it. Um, hold fast, that was true. Uh, abstain from all appearance of evil. And just, it's just some beautiful things in there that actually, if you can bring these into your life, just make it more peaceful. And um, it's just good. And it really does give you that rhythm. So if you want to know how to prepare and be found living like, this is where you want to be living like at Christ's second coming, this chapter's for you. So I said that at the beginning. So Paul reiterates that when is an unknown quantity and not nearly as important as how we are to strive to live. Christ dressed us for this. Wear that armor. It's a gift. Wear it. Trust his plan. It's not a fight of anger. Um, rather, go in peaceful charity. So remember that the, the weapon is the word of God. So don't use it to hurt people. Use that for peaceful, loving charity. And seek these things. They will prepare us in all facets, just as President Nelson has counseled us to do, to survive these times. Especially verses 19 and 20. We need this to survive these times. And that's what he's teaching here. The teaching hasn't changed. It is the same. 
So really go over these things. I think you'll love them. So anyway, that's chapter five. It is so full of goodness and such a beautiful place. If you're teaching anything this week to your family, pull some goals out of this that your family can do together or that you can do or that you and your partner can do, whatever. Um, there's just some really things, good things in here that we could all learn from uh, and just do better at them because we are children of light and this is our rhythm. So there you go. All right. Briefly, we're going to touch on Second Thessalonians and insight number five. I'll see you there.